in this lecture we are going to study about some of the basics of antennas and uh, their different kinds so how does an antenna work we must understand this first of all so if you want to transmit some uh, radiation or some electromagnetic waves from an antenna you have to provide some signal to that antenna so if you see this figure there is a generator it is also called a transmitter which produces this uh, this uh, signal in the form of voltage and currents at the required frequency the frequency at which the antenna will start radiating and then from this transmitter till this antenna uh, there will be some kind of a medium that will take this signal from the transmitter to the antenna so this medium can be uh, can be called as transmission line there are various kind of transmission lines uh, for example there are wave guides there are coaxial cables and so on optical fiber is also a kind of a transmission line but uh, for antenna we are generally talking about the non visible range of radio frequencies similarly if you are receiving some signal from the antenna uh, you can see this second part of this figure this signal is received in this antenna and through the transmission line this received signal goes back to the detector this detector is also called transmitter uh, sorry uh, receiver so uh, in short term we will uh, denote receiver as rx and transmitter as tx right so this is how your antenna basically works i am i just want to tell you one thing that uh, we know that electromagnetic waves are formed using elect, uh, electric voltage and currents but uh, this question must arise in your mind that uh, in our homes also we have electric voltage and currents which are alternating in time so why don't this voltage and current radiate outside like uh, in the form of electromagnetic waves you must uh, think about this thing but let me give you the hint in our home the frequency at which we get uh, our voltage and current supply is around 50 hertz right so what happens is if you calculate the wavelength of this uh, signal the electricity signal that comes in your home uh, it is given by c upon f and you know the light uh, speed of electromagnetic magnetic wave is 3 into 10 to the power a divided by what is the frequency 50 hertz so if you calculate it you will get it as 6000 kilometers so the wavelength of the signal that is coming inside your home as uh, alternating voltage or current it is having the wavelength of 6000 kilometers so it is so big that at a particular given time uh, what may be the can you guess the uh, length of wires in your home at max in if you consider a single room it will be 10 to 20 feet or 30 feet so suppose we take uh, 50 feet a very large room of 50 feet and this whole length is 6000 kilometers it is uh, double the size of india right is, uh, from north to, uh, to south india is around 3000 kilometer so it is double the size of india the wavelength and for a given time a 50 feet room will be uh, will be like a, a small point on that uh, on that wavelength so at a given time all the points in any home will have the same voltage there will be no voltage difference between the two points at any given time in your home so that is why if there is no voltage difference between uh, two points there will be no electric field between the two points in your home and if there is no electric field uh, change there will be no uh, current uh, oscillating current flowing between these two points and that is why the electromagnetic waves uh, fail to produce and like we studied in uh, maxwell equations that uh, change in electric field generates change in magnetic fields and vice versa so you have to have this uh, differential in electric field so that a differential in magnetic field is produced and when these two things are producing we will have an electromagnetic wave that will radiate outside in the space so that is why for an antenna to work or for a voltage and current to radiate we must have very high frequencies which must match the dimension of the antenna 
so for example if you are having a 10 meter uh, long metallic wire which is 10 meter and uh, suppose you take 50 gigahertz signal let me take a 50 gigahertz signal so 50 gigahertz means 50 into 10 to the power 9 uh, hertz so now if you replace this with 50 gigahertz what is the wavelength that you will get for this particular frequency uh, you will get uh, 6 into 10 to the power minus 3 meter so it is very very small in length now right it is very small so now your uh, wire is 10 meters long and your wavelength is very small which is 0.003 meter so you can say that at this wire there will be many uh, electric field differentials because there will be many points at which uh, the, there will be a voltage difference because many wavelength can be put on this same 10 meter wire so there will be different points with different voltages so with time there will be different electric fields which will oscillate with time and due to this oscillation in electric field you will get oscillation in magnetic field and from this wire electromagnetic waves will be radiating so what i mean to say is that the wavelength of the uh, voltage or current must be comparable to the dimension of antenna so that your electromagnetic wave will be forming and radiating from that particular antenna right now let us see what are the basic types of antenna that we see all around us so first of all we see wire antennas uh, in wire antenna you will have a metallic wire of different thicknesses uh, that can be made in different shapes and so that it will be used for different purposes for example the first image is of uh, helical antenna helix antenna which is basically used in satellite communication telemetry examples then we have this uh, folded dipole kind of antenna so uh, we will be uh, studying about the dipole antenna in, in detail in further lectures and then there is loop antennas these antennas are basically used in searching missions for radio signals and all so this kind of antennas are used in various applications like tv transmissions satellite communication radio and aircrafts now the, the 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 second category of antennas are aperture antenna aperture means some kind of opening or hole so a very good example is horn antenna horn you must have seen uh, there was a, a horn which used to come with cycles when you push the rubber behind it it will produce a honking voice so the whatever uh, becomes open uh, it is called a horn so basically in you in this image you can see there is a wave guide here this is the wave guide and uh, it is open like this horn at its output and whatever electromagnetic waves are in this wave guide will be coming outside from this horn uh, as radiation so these kind of antennas are also used in many application and one of the biggest application is is that it is used as a feed for this big parabolic reflector transmitter antennas used in uh, satellite communication so in lot of tv stations you will see a lot of uh, reflector antennas and for those reflector antennas which are connected to satellites the feed the signal feed is provided by these horn antennas now the third category is reflector antenna itself uh, it is very common you must have seen these kind of dishes everywhere in your city in your home where uh, this parabolic dish directly connects signal uh, collect signals from satellite so from satellite these signals come down and after reflecting these all these signals are concentrated on this particular device which is called lnbc lone wise block converter so from this uh, device the signal goes back to your tv right so that is how you get all these tv beautiful tv channels from satellite so the other category of antennas which are lesser known are lens antenna so similar to the optical lens which is used to focus the light at a particular focal point the lens antenna does that for radio waves where refraction mechanism is used 
to focus the radio waves at a particular point so it is basically used as a tracking radar antenna in the us air force maybe in india also the other very important category of antennas are micro strip antennas these antennas have basically changed the world around us uh, in your mobile device uh, you don't see anything coming out of your uh, handset which work, which looks like an antenna but there is an antenna inside your mobile itself and it is basically a micro strip patch antenna so whenever you make a call that antenna will radiate some signal which will go to nearby mobile tower and from there your voice will reach to the uh, receiver where you have called so micro strip antennas are basically metallic patches which can be made over a pcb uh, a dielectric surface and uh, it can be made in various shapes depending upon our needs and uh, as you can see here this is a circular metallic patch this is uh, some different kind of a shape these shapes define the characteristic of antenna how will it radiate in what direction will it radiate and what gain will it have in a particular direction so these antennas are very versatile and it can be used in lot of applications like in aircraft satellites missiles car mobile and practically everywhere these kind of antennas are used nowadays the other kind of antennas are array antennas in which multiple number of small antennas are put in an array so that they collectively work as a very big antenna so as example you can see these are basically radio telescopes so all these single antennas when they are working in a collaboration they can detect very far away objects like very far away galaxies very far signals from very far away planets and all so uh, these combination of small antennas are called array antennas and they can be used for different kind of purposes now there is another type of uh, diff, uh, like uh, we can divide antennas in two more categories the first one is called the isotropic antenna isotropic antenna is a theoretical antenna it does not exist practically it cannot be made practically but it is used as a base or reference antenna for defining the characteristic of other antenna which are called directional antennas so is what does isotropic means isotropic means the radiation pattern of any antenna is same in all the direction so suppose we have an isotropic source which is basically a point source and if it is radiating electromagnetic wave it will be radiating in all the direction similarly the same amount of gain will be there in all the directions so in in this spherical figure you can assume that there is an isotropic antenna and the electromagnetic radiations are going outside exactly the same amount of gain in all the direction that is why you will see a spherical pattern of radiation pattern which is expanding in size now in the directional antenna when the antenna directs its energy in a particular direction not in all the direction similarly like in the isotropic antenna when an antenna is directing its majority of energy in a particular direction or a particular group of direction then that kind of antenna is called a directional antenna for example if you take a dipole normal dipole so its radiation pattern will be like this so uh, from the axis of dipole at 90 degree and at 270 degree or minus 90 degree you will have maximum radiation but in the axis of dipole which is 0 degree and 180 degree there will be no radiation you will not get any em radiation wave in uh, in the axis of dipole so this is this dipole is a kind of a directional antenna now we know that there are different kind of antennas which are used for different kind of purposes so we must need to define different characteristics of antenna which are suitable for different kind of uh, applications so there are different kind of antenna characteristics like uh, efficiency of antenna uh, the proportion of energy that antenna converts into electromagnetic waves with respect to the amount of energy in the form of voltage and current that is fed to it that that is uh, defined by these circuit quantities which are basically antenna impedance and uh, radiation resistance which we will see in further lectures 
how the antenna performs in terms of noise that is given by the noise temperature uh, antenna temperature uh, there are different physical quantities like size and weight of the antenna depending on the application which kind of antenna which size of antenna which we should use depending on the frequency of operation what kind of antenna we should use so in the previous li slide we saw that the dimension of antenna should be comparable to the wavelength of the uh, frequent uh, the the wave that we are operating on it so we can very easily say that if the frequency of operation is very high then the wavelength will be very small and for that we will be needing very small antenna that is why our mobile communication works at a very high frequency in gigahertz mega higher megahertz and gigahertz range so that the size of antenna is very small which can be put in our mobile device also if you see uh, there are very big dishes uh, in tv transmitters so for those big dishes uh, the the frequency of operation need not to be very uh, very of high frequency it can be of lower frequency because the dimension of antenna is huge so we will be seeing that the size and weight aspect also now there are some space quantities like in what direction an antenna is uh, having maximum radiation we will be talking about the gain of the antenna what is the shape of the beam which is being radiated from an antenna so all these things will be covered in these space quantities which are uh, radiation patterns polarization beam area directivity gain and antenna aperture so we will be seeing all this in the next lectures thank you